call this meeting to order. Please join me if you can for a moment of silence in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Thanks for everyone who came today. Um, it's good to see so many faces in the audience this evening. Um, <clears throat> uh, our first agenda item will be approval of the regular meeting proposed agenda. I'm not aware of any changes. I would entertain a motion to that effect at this time. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Gray. A second. Seconded by Commissioner Danlowski. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion carries. Um, next will be the open forum. Is there anyone signed up for open forum this evening? Yes, Chair. We have three people signed up. Our first one is Marissa Max of Becker, and she'll be speaking regarding the 4-H horse barns. Okay. Hi, my name is Marissa Mox, and I'm here to speak on the 4-H uh, barns and its safety. Um, within the last couple years, we've been really struggling with the safety of the barns. Um, we want to bring our animals, we bring them to display to kind of bring agriculture into a very developing city. Um, but the safety of the barns itself has been a real struggle, whether it be ceilings that can't uphold, stalls being too small for horses, um, aisles being too small to navigate horses out and in of barns, including um, the general public safety as well. Um, we have been struggling to be able to make plans to improve these barns because of the risk of the buildings not being there in five to 10 years. Um, 4-H has been a part of the Sherburne County Fairgrounds since I think the first couple years it even started over 100 years ago. And it's been there to maintain the agriculture and essentially keep the history that's in this town as it develops and becomes more um, industrialized, I guess, is a good word for it. Um, and we feel it's important to protect that because it's essentially the roots of the city and we feel that um, being able to safely store our animals overnight during the duration of either a county fair or just in the barns in general is very important because even when I graduate out, I donated um, 10 years of my youth to 4-H alone and we feel it's important to move on with these improvements because it's not just my future, it's the future of all the kids currently in this program who start from as young as four even. And uh, we just want to reiterate, we're not asking essentially for money. We just want clear communication and answers of, I guess, a plan of how we can move forward and plan for these safer barns. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Next, we have Lindy Ledoux of Dayton speaking on 4-H Fairgrounds. Good evening. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Lindy Ledoux. I did not grow up in 4-H, so I have been overwhelmed by the opportunities that 4-H has to offer my kids. For many of the project areas, the culmination of the year's activities and learning is to exhibit at the county fair. And that is in hopes of advancing to the great Minnesota get together, the Minnesota State Fair. This is my family's sixth year in 4-H and it has been amazing to see the community support and generosity for 4-H programming. Sherburne County 4-H has one extension educator that is a staff or paid position and the rest of the hands-on programming is put on by parents and volunteers and they are investing their time, their resources, and knowledge into the youth. 
I wish I could list all the businesses and sponsors and volunteers that have contributed to the 4-H program, but I can't due to time constraints. But I must draw attention to the generosity of the farmers and animal owners in Sherburne County. I didn't know that it was a thing to be able to lease a cow or chickens or pigs or goats. I knew about horses, but there are so many generous um, owners that will create opportunities for kids who are interested in exploring, learning these other areas. It's just incredible. Historically, this is what the county fair is all about. It's a coming together of the community to showcase the best of what Sherburne County has to offer. It's a chance to showcase the talents and the knowledge of the community and the businesses of the community and county that support the programming and youth development and the agricultural heritage. At this time, we the 4-H families are asking you to secure a long-term venue for the Sherburne County Fair and to engage in an open dialogue with community involvement in the development or renovation of the fairground facilities. The last five years that we've been participating in 4-H and the fair, any concerns that have been brought up have been met with the response, don't make waves. The county wants to sell the fairgrounds and you won't have a fair. This is not a healthy or productive means of communicating or operating. It's by fear and by speculation. Please tell us, what is the future of the fairgrounds? Relocating the fairgrounds is a big endeavor, as would be the development and renovation of the current fairgrounds. It's not something that we, by any means, want to see rushed through. We would like to see that care is taken and planning so that the fair can continue uninterrupted. The county has had a fair every year for 135 years, with the exception of 1946 and 2020. And in today's economy, another shutdown could be a death blow for the fair, and the fair is vital to the 4-H program. Thank you for your comments. Yep. And the last speaker that signed up is Kaylin Maloney of Elk River speaking on the 4-H barns. Hello. Hello. Um, good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm speaking for the same thing as everybody else is. Um, my, this is my third year in 4-H. Um, my mom was in it, my grandma was in it, and before then they were all in it. Um, my horse has been showing in it for two or three years now, too, and I'm starting a new horse in it. Um, the, the barns aren't in the greatest condition, and we're hoping to keep it going for as long as we can. Um, I joined a little later than most of these guys, but we try our hardest to keep everything up to date and um, keep it as new as we can. Uh, we paint the barns and we keep it nice and we all get together all the time and do fun community projects and anything we can for the fairgrounds. Um, I don't know what else to say. I just want to keep the fairgrounds going and our horses there and everything else. Yeah, that's about right. it. Well, thank you for your comments. Is that it? Okay, well, um, thank you very much for your comments. It's great to see people come in and voice their opinions for the board. I will say that we are engaging in or beginning negotiations um, with the fair board, so we are actively at this point in time uh, looking at the future of the fair here. So. Uh, <clears throat> next item on the agenda will be the consent agenda. Um, I'm not aware of any changes to the consent agenda, so at this point I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as uh, indicated in the agenda. Mr. Chair, I'll move approval. Uh, Commissioner Foby moves. Pro I'll second that. Commissioner Gray seconds. Um, all those in favor, oh, excuse me, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, motion carries. 
Next item on the agenda will be announcements. Mr. Messup, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Just a few quick announcements for the board tonight. Um, first of all, uh, you, will be, you will be getting a link from the uh, Sherburn County AIS Task Force to do a survey. Um, we're gearing up that uh, led by our Soil and Water Conservation District to look at our um, aquatic invasive species approach and how things are going, uh, especially as we get closer here to this year. Uh, second of all, um, just a reminder that AMC is hosting a cybersecurity uh, uh, forum and discussion in St. Cloud on the 25th of April. If you're interested, please let Keisha or me know and we'll make sure you get scheduled. Uh, third, we did send out a, a survey for a tour of the Sherco coal plant. Um, if you, I know some of you went through the nuclear power plant uh, last year. Uh, this would be an opportunity to see the Sherco power plant as well. Um, given the discussions that were held last week with the new um, president uh, and CEO of uh, XL Energy Midwest, I think it'll be interesting for us. I, the the impl implications we got, at least, is that that facility will still be occupied in some form or fashion. Or let me back up, that property will be occupied, uh, the, but the facility may look very different in the future. So uh, if you do have time and are interested in the tour, please let me know. Um, and then just a note on legislative updates, and I would guess I, when I'm done here, I'd be interested in take notes if you have strong thoughts on what you're reading or taking care of. Obviously with the Easter break, it's slowed down a little bit, but um, there's been a few things of importance to the county that have developed. Uh, first of all is um, the good news is, is in the governor's supplemental budget bill, um, there is $109 million set aside for uh, payment for Tyler versus Hennepin County. Um, this is important, uh, although for Sherburne County, it's not necessarily critical. For some of our uh, brother and sister counties, it's, it's important. This, uh, you recall, is the lawsuit where uh, over many, many years, the, um, the condemnation process and then the sale of condemned properties, um, yeah, or sorry, tax forfeited properties, thank you. Um, what, what occurred is, is that most of those don't sell for uh, enough to cover the costs of counties, but a few do sell either at or above market rates. And the US Supreme Court has ruled that individual sales need to be evaluated, not aggregate sales. And individual sales that are above market rate, it would be considered an illegal taking. Um, therefore, um, the negotiations to settle class action lawsuits has been occurring. Uh, we've been a party to that led by AMC. And there is a, a, a proposed settlement that would settle most of claims against Minnesota's counties. Uh, what was missing then was the repayment uh, for those claims. And so the state legislature, at least the governor's office, has um, understood that counties were simply implementing law at the time and that it would be very onerous on individual counties to pay for that versus the state. So we're excited that that at least has been addressed. Um, the second thing I would note is that the first deadline is passed for uh, <clears throat> not just policy bills but also major funding bills. Um, there was no, uh, no legislative action taken uh, with respect to the North Star question that we discussed last fall. Um, therefore, we consider it to be to bed uh, for the remainder of this year. Um, and we're kind of in a status quo holding pattern, which the board is all uh, very well aware of. So we'll be tracking that uh, in case anything else changes there as well. And then, of course, a, a bevy of other bills that are still making their way through the legislature. Um, some of them are pretty serious, and I know you've been see, reading either AMC's updates or Micah's updates, um, but I would be interested in your feedback right now on this particular topic uh, before we move on so that I can make sure we're tracking things appropriately. What are you hearing? What are you concerned about? Things that uh, you'd like to make sure your staff are on top of. Mr. Nothing. Chair, um, yes, Easter break uh, has been real slow, so I haven't heard much more um, than what you've already shared. The, uh, for me, the, I don't have an update on the uh, property tax reform bill, um, because once again, because of Easter, it was uh, relatively slow. But I would um, want to make sure that we are staying very, very close to the, uh, to the North Star issue, um, as we've stated before, based on the uh, there are no agreements in place, and 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 we're currently not paying um, the O and M costs, and I don't intend us to pay the O and M costs, at least from my perspective. It's unfair to have one county singled out like it was. So, just I would want to make sure we stay very close to that. And we'll do that for sure. 
Um, then the last thing I would note just for board information is uh, our newest state representative, uh, Brian Lawrence, was sworn in, I believe it was today. Yes. Um, uh, if you get a chance and want to congratulate him, I, I think that would be appropriate. I did ask uh, representative uh, at the time, elect Lawrence, this was last week, uh, to set up some time so we can brief him on the county's legislative priorities. And once I get that scheduled, I would uh, probably ask for um, the commissioner from the district that he represents and the chair to sit down with him and we'll go over our legislative priorities. Uh, and, and Brian's pretty familiar with them, but from a different perspective or angle. So I think it'll be helpful to do that. That'd be great. All right. And that's all I have unless there's questions for your staff. Oh, I don't have any. Anyone else? No. Okay. Um, one other thing I should note since we do have folks here. Uh, I have asked the fair board to uh, come to the county board meeting on the 16th if they're available just to give you an update on last year's fair, how things went. You know, typically our groups that we have partnerships with, they come in, you know, once in a while and give you an annual update. So we have the library folks in today. So if the fair board's available either at the next meeting or the one after, uh, we'll just do a little sit down and they can uh, provide you a little perspective on how things went and, and where they're at and where they're going. Okay. Commissioner Fulton. Mr. Chair, as part of that also, I would, pr I would really like it to be an overview of what's our responsibility at this dais for the fair and the and the property and all of that and where our responsibility starts and ends and if we could have a workshop on that piece also that sure. would be really helpful yeah i'll probably have uh, kathy uh, help me put that together i mean it's pretty simple there's a lease uh, the lease is an all encumbering lease so basically we lease the property and the buildings for one dollar a year and the fair board is responsible for all operations and maintenance uh, we do give a subsidy to the fair board to assist with some of the capital costs, and I don't know if they use it for operating costs as well. Uh, it's somewhere in the John forty thousand dollar range, thirty five. Uh, and then, of course, we also support uh, uh, the fair through our staff support through the University of Minnesota. And you heard one of the speakers talk about that. So, you know, overall, the county's probably one to two hundred thousand dollars into. Um, extension, agriculture, fair related costs per year that we're putting into those types of activities. So we'll prep something for you yeah, as part of that, that discussion. That would be great, just so we know what our responsibility is for yeah. the fair. Yeah, and I'll, I'll send a copy of the, of the draft lease, or the, the previous lease. It's, it's pretty black and white. I mean, it's, uh, as you can imagine. And my understanding from the history is, I think at one time the fair actually owned the land, is that right? But because of the costs involved and the insurance involved, there was an agreement that the county would own the land and the buildings because it falls under MCIT, our insurance trust. Uh, and then there's the lease back to the fair board to, to operate the fair. So it's, uh, it's been a pretty clean lease when it comes to that. There's not a lot of operational entanglements. And then, as you know, every once in a while when the county can help out, they do. So this last year we put in Wi-Fi, Dan, is that right? <laughs> um, oh, Jen, you're, you're communicating, right? And that was to help out both the vendors, and I think your office got better Wi-Fi too, right? Um, you know, so and that was a cost that the county took under ARPA. So, uh, you know, we do what we can when we can. Okay. Um, thank you very much for, for all that information. Um, the next item on the agenda would be consider approval of approximation designated in the week of April 14th to the 20th, 2024, as Public Safety Telecommunications Week. Did you print me a copy of that, or? I didn't. Do you, you want me to read it, or do you come? I will read it then off of my screen. Okay, and Keisha will scroll it perfectly timed with your beautiful cadence. <laughs> All right. That would be fantastic. Right. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Proclamation, Public Sa Safety Telecommunications Week 2024. Whereas one week in April is designated as National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. This year, that week is April 14th, to the 20th, 2024. Whereas the Sherburne County Sheriff's Office supports the proposition that the men and women who perform the difficult tasks of operating the county's 911 dispatch center deserve this recognition. Whereas the Sheriff's, Sherburne County Sheriff's Office <clears throat> recognizes that our 911 dispatchers are professionals equal in status and importance to other public safety professionals in the effective administration of justice. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the Sherburne County Board of Commissioners, do hereby acknowledge the week of April 14th to the 20th, 2024, as Public Safety Telecommunications Week 
in Sherburne County in honor of the dedicated professionals who work diligently in the county's 911 dispatch center. Um, at this point, I would entertain a motion uh, to accept that proclamation. Mr. Chair, I move to accept the proclamation as read and presented. Uh, Commissioner Danlowski, uh, motions? I'll second. Commissioner Hulse, seconds. Uh, any discussion? No, Mr. Chair, I just want to say thank you for recognizing our dispatch officers. Yes. I, similar, I just want to really thank you for uh, bringing this proclamation forward and also just thank you to all of our dispatchers for the really very important work to keep help keep our public, public safe. And Mr. Chair, I'll just chime in as well. <clears throat> I did a, a tour late last year um, of the dispatch center and the, the work that they do there is, is, um, is not easy work. Um, and it, but it's vital work and they do a great job at it. So once again, appreciate everybody's work. Yeah, the calming voice that you hear when you call 911 is that of those 911 operators. And I think proclamation is probably on the short order of what we can do for them in the, in the, in the, in the future. Yes, I, I personally, I was, it was an honor for me to be able to read this proclamation because dispatchers are some of my favorite people. Um, relied on them many times in, in the past and they just, do a tremendous job under a lot of stress. Um, so I really do appreciate their work. Okay. Uh, so all those in favor, please say aye. 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 None opposed, motion carries. Um, next item on the agenda will be, we're going to receive an update on the Great River Regional Library. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Karen Punsack. I'm the Executive Director for Great River Regional Library. Um, I have with me Hilary Honer Dawson and Margot Berry, who run our Sherburne County branches. And we're going to tell you about how things went at Great River last year. Um, on the screen here, you can see that we are a six county region. Sherburne County is one of our strong partners within that six county partnership. And we have locations across the entire region. We have 32 libraries and then a locker system, which is a partnership with the city of Sartell called GRL to go. And we're really proud of the way we deliver services across the six county area. It's a seamless experience for patrons. The policies are the same, regardless of which side of the border you might be on. You can return your books in Staples or Delano. It really doesn't matter. We make sure that they get where they need to go. Um, we have a 15-member board, and we're really fortunate to have really strong representation on that board. So Commissioner Phoebe has been on our board for probably six years now, seven. I don't know. It's been a while. I'm in my eighth. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, we also, um, Mary Everly was a citizen from Elk River. She just termed off after serving her full nine years on the board. We also have Jane Dietz, who has been on the board for quite a few years as well and has served in a variety of leadership roles and welcomed Laura Kangas also this year to the Great River Board. So we have representation now from Elk River, from the um, more eastern side of the county, and um, also the Clearwater, Becker, Foley areas as well. Um, let's see, let's turn it on maybe. Well, it's not scrolling. There we go. Okay. So thanks for your patience. Last year was a great year at Great River. We have four locations that are primarily serving our Sherburne County residents. We have the St. Cloud Library down in the bottom right-hand corner. It is one of the largest public libraries in the state of Minnesota and very well used. Um, Elk River is the largest library here in um, Elk River, of course, but is also the second largest in the system as well. Becker and Big Lake, also strong communities, strong library communities. We had 95,000 active borrowers across the entire region last year. And that includes, um, let's see here, almost 10,000 borrowers in Elk River, 
almost 3,000 borrowers in Big Lake and 2,500 borrowers in Becker. So a lot of people using the library, and that means that somebody's used a card at least once in the last three years in at least one location across the region. The digital library is also one that's beginning to stand out more and more. So our largest circulating library is St. Cloud. It circulated about a half a million physical items last year. Um, the digital library is now the second largest circulating library in the system at about 380,000 items on our OverDrive platform. That total there includes our other platforms. And then um, Elk River is still circulating over 200,000 items. So we see a lot of activities in all of our communities, but people are using the library in many different ways. And that digital circulation is something that's continuing to grow exponentially, especially since COVID. And we've been investing in that platform because there's a lot more interest in it. Uh, last year was a record year for a summer reading program across the region. We had almost 13,000 kids, 0 to 18, participate in the program. We expect next year to be a very strong year as well. Some of the regional activities that I wanted to make sure to highlight, um, we have arts and cultural legacy amendment funding, and we were able to create an exhibit called Testify with the, um, you may remember, former Supreme Court Justice, retired Supreme Court Justice Alan Page, and um, you can see his daughter Georgie there. That was their homegrown Americana collection from the George and Diane Page Foundation. That was on display down in Minneapolis. We worked with Georgie to create high resolution banner images that were displayed in the St. Cloud Library last year. A number of other regions used their legacy funding to expand the exhibit statewide, and there will be a virtual presentation with Justice Allen Page and his daughter Georgie on April 30th. So we've now taken the exhibit and distributed it across the region. There's three of the banners now in the Elk River Public Library if you'd like to see them, and there's four other locations besides that have parts of it, and we continue to rotate that around. The epic kits that you see on the bottom right-hand corner was funded through our ARPA dollars a couple of years ago. It was a partnership with Epic um, exploring potential interests in careers. So the idea of getting kids involved in different career fields early on, and there's a big event at St. Cloud Tech College for ninth graders to go meet. It's kind of like a job fair for ninth graders to, to see, you know, do I want to be an architect? Do you want to be a police officer? And we worked with those career cluster leaders who put those tables together for the event to create makerspace boxes that actually check out across the region. And we're hoping to expand that project this year. Elk River is hoping to get some with their locally grown funds, I think, right? Or no? No, a different set of funds. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we're it's something that's continuing to grow across the region. So we're really proud of those types of partnerships that allow us to take a community need and then expand it even beyond one community. <coughs> and I will turn the mic over to our library services coordinators to tell you all about what's happening locally. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to share some of the wonderful things happening at our libraries. As you can see, the Becker Public Library had a tiny art show as part of their summer reading program in 2023. With 425 participants, our summer reading program was a bustle of activity. The kids engaged in the joy of reading, participated in programming facilitated by our staff, and enjoyed legacy programs such as Bruce the Bug Guy and the Dolly Pops. Storytime has been a very successful um, program, and Tiny Tots program has also been growing. Both programs have given the library an opportunity to connect with young families in our community. Becker Library also participates with the school to display um, student artwork every April. We are excited about hosting the Becker Art Show again this year, opening April 11th. Staying with the art theme, in 2023, the first of three community mosaics were completed, and we will be completing the second one this year. Schooled in Art is a new program for us in Becker and in Big Lake. Um, it is a staff-led educational art experience for students. And they are introduced to a, um, an artist or an art style, and then they have the opportunity to create a piece of art which they may display in the library for um, the month. Um, it has been very well received in both Becker and Big Lake. 
Moving on to Big Lake, as you can see there, Pedal to the Metal, which is a traveling foundry where participants were able to engage in the metal casting process, allowing them to create small scale sculptures. They visited us um, in Big Lake this past summer. Other programming, such as a successful summer reading program, um, Scally Line and Driving to Drum, a Heart and Soul Drum Academy program, kept Big Lake patrons engaged and enjoying the summer. Along with facilitating story time and Tiny Tots programming, Big Lake Library does outreach. Attending ECFE in the park, doing a monthly story time with Hive Time Child Care at the Liberty um, Elementary School, and hosting Big Lake Kids Club. Um, summer visits to the library. So the kiddos come over once a week and they spend some time in the library. We're able to connect children and their families to the library and services that we offer. And it's not only a goal for us, but it is a joy. I've mentioned some ways that the library and staff have connected with our community. And now please allow me to share um, a couple of stories about individual <coughs> patrons. So a mother reached out to ask if there was any way to access an old McGuffey's reader or other school books from the 1800s because she and her second grade daughter were reading these happy gold, golden years aloud, excuse me. Her daughter was wondering what the school books w um, were like back then. <coughs> it turns out that we have three in our system with original publication dates of 1909 and 1920. An additional copy was sourced for them from MinLink with a questionable publication date of 1879. They were so excited to get these. Um, it brought a piece of history to life for both of them, and we were able to be a huge part of that experience for them. Another patron, a widow, called seeking um, to print a form to fill out to release property from joint ownership to sole ownership. I don't understand all the details on this, but um, <laughs> she gave me a website that she believed would lead her to that form. It led to an entire list of forms. Um, not knowing what form exactly she needed and not understanding that we as library staff um, cannot advise her on that, she became very upset. Um, through a series of phone calls, she was connected though to the correct resources that she needed. We connected her to Mid-Minnesota Legal Aid, someone at the county, I'm not exactly sure who that was, <laughs> can't remember right now, um, and TRICAP for trans transportation services to get her to and from appointments that were necessary. Those resources allowed her to work through a very difficult time in her life, and the library was a part of that um, resolution for her. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Commissioners, good evening. Uh, I'm Margot Berry. I'm the Library Services Coordinator at Elk River Library. Um, I'm going to share with you, it's, I'm calling it foundational work. 2023 at Elk River Library was about foundational work. And you'll get a sense of why in a moment. So in 2023, we had seven staff who were new as of 2023. We had two staff members who had been hired in November of 2022. We had one staff member who was, had been there for 12 years and one who had been there for 23 years. So as you can tell, the vast majority of our 11 staff, um, I think I didn't count somebody, um, are new. So it was really important to lay a good foundation to continue the good work that had already been, been being done in Elk River. So during the last year, we hired, we trained, and we developed. Not only these new staff, but I was one of the new members to Elk River as well. Part of that um, was done during summer reading program. So if you're familiar at all with summer reading program and you've got almost entirely new staff, it's a big undertaking. And we had a very successful summer reading program. And I'll get to part of why I think that was successful in a moment. So the next part is outreach. That was a really important thing because like I said, most of our staff were new. They didn't all know the community. Some were from Big Lake and Elk River area, some were not. So outreach has been an important part. Um, I'd say we mostly engaged um, in very local events. We started with the Farmer's Market in Elk River, um, participated in Elk River Fest, and then Project Community Connect. These were the best experiences, and this year every staff person is going to spend time out at these events. Uh, I think we gained quite a number of new library cards and uh, participants for summer reading through our outreach at the farmer's market, 
and I firmly believe that we got a lot new, a lot of new card holders through Elk River Fest. We gave out 250 or so books to young children and had a lot of great conversations and found out some things that people were interested in learning about, about the library, connecting with them to things that already existed and getting feedback about things that they wanted. So that outreach was foundational. And um, yes, the last part, the physical space. The physical space, it's a beautiful building. It's not that old, but time goes by and things need repairing. And time goes by and people use the building differently. So a lot of the time in 2023 was spent paying attention to how people were using the building. How were they, where were they going? Where were they sitting? Were they coming in and coming out? Every community is different and as time goes by, that changes and use changes. So a lot of that time was spent paying attention to what was going on. Paying attention helped build a relationship with the city of Elk River. I will say, before I get to that even better part, we had a little incident last summer where our, um, it's a compressor that regulates controls of the cooling system, it broke. And we literally had puddles on the floor. Um, it was one of those hot, humid days. It was like 90 some degrees with high humidity. We had puddles on the floor. The city of Elk River was there. They were on it. They took care of business and they took care of us. And we, I think we closed for a few hours and that was it. So I would say that's where, um, I'd say I and the city of Elk River bonded was over puddles on the floor. But what it speaks to larger is that it was community building. In a way, it was outreach. We were, out, we were reaching out to each other to support and to help one another. We were uh, keeping in contact with the community members who were like, what's going on? Um, people were, it was a big story. Let's put it that way. There's a lot of discussion about it, but it was a way to connect with people. So it was another foundational thing. And so if I leap forward in that physical space, continuing that relationship with the city, continuing the relationship we have with the Greater Great River uh, Regional Library, my partners and peers and uh, leadership, we've spent a lot of time discussing how can we improve the accessibility and the visibility of our collection. Because what I was seeing is that the building, when you walk in, it was a little closed off and you were a little quarantined into little areas and there wasn't a lot of places to sit and enjoy yourself or just take a break or rest while you're waiting for your kids to check out their books or whatever it might be, or mom or dad. So we made a plan working as a team. This was a collective team between Great River Regional Library, our staff at Elk River, and the city of Elk River, and we determined a way to move forward to make small but significant changes that were almost done tweaking. And what we're seeing already is that community members, if we put a table and a chair out there, they'll sit and they'll talk and they'll meet with each other and spend time together. They'll go to their hold shelf and pick up their books and then go sit down and leaf through their books. They'll uh, sit down and take a break. There was a gentleman who's like, is it okay if I sit here? These chairs are pretty, and I, no, you can sit there, it's fine. He just loved the chairs and thought they were unique and he just sat down and took a break. So again, foundational. I could give you a lot of statistics and information about our circulation, and yes, we did break 10,000 uh, patrons um, shortly after the new year. We have a lot more to work to do, and we have a lot more outreach to do, and we've just made the first foundational steps. So I'm really looking forward to talking with you next year to share a little bit more information, um, particularly in developing programming around our um, EDGE programs, and those are programs that really reach out to community, or reach out and bring back um, programming that will support the real needs of our community. And some of that is di digital literacy. Some of that is, I don't look at my list because I'll forget, civic engagement, um, digital skills, health, economic opportunities. But again, that's going to require us to go out and listen and bring it back into the library. And that's what we do. We go out, we listen, we bring it back, and then we send it out and we bring it back. Et cetera. So thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate being able to share. Our team at Elk River, by the way, is awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know this isn't an action item, but does anybody have any uh, commentary? Uh, Commissioner Colby. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just thank you for being here. Um, having served on the Great River Regional Library Board now for in my eighth year, Karen, um, every year it's just so clear to me how critical these services are for our community and we each have a piece in that so our board here we make decisions with funding 
our partners with our city is so key, and I'm so grateful to Elk River, Big Lake, Becker, Monticello's got a pretty big site that I think some of us sneak over to, or some of our patrons sneak over to, and St. Cloud. But um, this last summer, I had the opportunity to work with some of our library staff on, on some efforts, and it just was so clear to me how our library staff serve each and every person that comes in front of them and the stories that you shared hillary it doesn't matter what it is they will go the miles to serve people so it's a it's great and i appreciate the presentation and it gives our public uh, an idea of what county boards support and what we're a part of so thank you yeah it's a unique partnership because the cities provide the buildings and great river takes all of the county funding and the state funding and and provide the books, the computers, the people, but it's the community that really makes the whole thing come alive. And, you know, obviously the staff. You, we, we have the most amazing staff in the entire state in terms of who's at the library at the desk every day, and you can see that today. So it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for your support. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to say as well, um, there's also a great network. Um, each library has a Friends of the Library organization, and those are a lot of great um, people that come together. They volunteer their time and their energy to support the library and be a part of that community outreach as well. And I know that you guys appreciate them um, as well as I appreciate them in every community because they make a big difference too in helping the library um, with their needs. Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm glad you bring that up because we have, they, they not only provide financial support, they're without a doubt our strongest donors, if you look at it from that perspective, but it's also a large volunteer base. I want to say, I don't remember the numbers from 23, but I think we had over 14,000 volunteer hours in 2022, and I know it was more last year, so very fortunate to have so much support. Thank you. And thank you for everything you guys do to keep these libraries as successful and as awesome as they are. Yeah, I do. I think the whole board up here understands the importance of the library for everyone. Um, it's in, we have not, the four of us have not been able to experience it as in-depth as Commissioner Phoebe has because she's been on it for eight years. So maybe someday she'll let us have the opportunity <laughs> beyond the county, the library board. So. You can always come and visit <laughs> any location, anytime. We'll give you a tour, Eva. Okay. Anyone else? I'm just going to say myself. I, I, I'm glad. I'm, I enjoy reading myself. I mean, last month I probably got through about six uh, nonfiction and fictional works, along with my regular reading. And I'm really glad to see that there's some programs out there to introduce kids to art. I still have a certain fondness for art medals. I dabble in it occasionally yet. So it's good to see all these programs going in the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. So. One other thing, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to say, um, I know a lot of people think that you, know, you can get so much online, but there still is something to be said about what a library can offer. And that touching of that actual physical book um, is a huge thing. And plus all the things you, uh, you offer for people that might not have those um, um, needs that they can get through their own technology at home. So thank you for that as well, because it's super important. We, we've actually seen a big shift in circulation over time. Part of it was accelerated by the pandemic, but a large proportion of our physical circulation used to be CDs and movies on DVD. And a lot of that has gone to streaming. And so it's interesting to see physical circulation increase because that's actually a result of mostly kids' books increasing in circulation by such a large proportion. So we're fortunate that our community, our, our young people do want to see those physical books. And people think, you know, kids' technology, well, they're, they're wise to the technology too. They know that there's a place and kids learn best with print. And especially when the um, our chair said about um, art and stuff and the illustrations that those books have as well, mm -hmm. that some kids might never see um, in any other form. So exactly. I'm done. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I just want to volunteer that if they do bring Bruce the bug back next year, 
I, I do have a cephalopod uh, outfit. I'll volunteer to help. Careful, <laughs> <laughs> Bruce. Oh, we've got something to look forward to. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's a visual for you. There you go. Hey, right. if, if you saw Corey in the Easter Bunny outfit, I don't know if you saw him on Saturday. Corey had the Easter Bunny outfit on. I tell you, I can do the bug, okay? Yes. okay. And I'm going to put County Attorney Kathleen on the spot here. She was whis a little kind of whispering something about having her grandmother's I have my grandmother's um, textbook that was that's fantastic. It's so fun. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. Are we done? Actually, this time we're done. We're actually done. done? Okay. <laughs> we're done. Right. I don't want to move on while well, we're still having conversation. Great topic. Thank you very much for coming in. Um, See, uh, the next item on the agenda would be to consider the approval of Hans Foreign Auto and Truck Parts County Solid Waste License. Mr. Lucas? Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. So before you is a license to approve, um, to allow for Hans Foreign Auto Services to operate a solid waste license for a processing facility. This is a salvage yard. So salvage yards are considered a processing facility within the solid waste ordinance and the county license would allow Hans Foreign Auto and truck parts to receive for processing motor vehicles, parts of motor vehicles, covered electronic devices as defined within the solid waste ordinance and other types of recyclable materials. This license sets forth standards for receiving and screening, storage and processing of acceptable waste materials and also requirements for how to manage unacceptable materials as they may be received from time to time. Uh, this license was, was prepared, Hans agrees to the language, it was sent to the county attorney's office for a review, and the attorney's office approves of this license. In, in accordance with the ordinance, a first term license is for one year. Thereafter, it can be for multiple years, up, up to five years. We have never licensed salvage yards before. This is the first time moving forward. It, it, it is within the ordinance. What precipitated this was we're also working on a license for right-of-way auto in the city of Big Lake. The community defined, identified that that particular facility is within a wellhead protection. So moving forward to bring that facility under license, we look to see where other salvage yards within the county exist and to license all of them so everyone is operating on the same page. That's why we're moving forward. Hans just happened to get their license done first. We're very close to having right away, done right away, and that will be coming probably the next county board meeting. But right now, before you is Hans for an auto and truck parts. Any questions? I just wanted to clarify, when you talked about right away auto, that's actually in Big Lake Township? Correct, for clarification. Yes. Yeah. it is, you're right. Mr. Chair, and just a quick question. So the so this ex, so this or, so this company is an existing operation. It, yes, sir. We are bringing it. We are bringing it in, into new code compliance by starting to license these facilities across the the county. Correct. Correct. So what okay. they what they needed to do was they needed to um, set up a um, industrial stormwater um, permit with the PCA. That's something they had not had in, in place before. And um, register with the MPCA and provide a, a insurance and bond. And then we're working with them to have a better process for when vehicles come in, where they're first stored, so that they can be drained of fluids appropriately and the, before they go out to um, storage. Okay, thank you. Standing. Any other questions? 
for is there on-site visits in regards to compliance or anything of that nature? We will be conducting regular inspections like we do with every other facility. Okay. There's no other questions. At this point, I would entertain a motion to approve this license. Mr. Chair, I'll move approval of this license. Commissioner Foby uh, moves approval. I'll second, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Danlowski seconds. Um, any further discussion? Just a question. Uh, and I don't know, are they here tonight, huh? the people with Hans, the owners? They're okay. not. How long have they been there? <coughs> Hans oh. has been there a long time. Long time. Long yes. time. Okay. 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 No more. No. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? No one opposed. Motion carries. Um, Thank you. Next item on the agenda. <laughs> thank you very much for coming in. The next item on the agenda is the commissioner correspondence. Um, who would like to go first? Mr. Chair, I'll go. Okay. Commissioner uh, <laughs> shocker. So the uh, so the, uh, was traveling over the last week. So I want to uh, highlight a couple of key things. Um, one is so Administrator Messalt, myself, um, uh, the uh, Elk River. Administrator and Mayor Dietz met a um, uh, week before last to discuss a number of topics um, uh, that are of joint interest to the county and um, Elk River, the city of Elk River. I will say that one of the key topics was, in fact, the uh, the, uh, the fairgrounds. Um, so that topic was uh, on uh, uh, was on the agenda, and we had a, we had a pretty good discussion about that as well. Um, secondly. Um, I had a meeting with the uh, we had a uh, joint powers meeting or the, the board meeting with the uh, Rum River um, Watershed District. Due to the joint powers agreement, um, they're finishing up their 2025 budget. So by the joint powers agreement, we as a board have a courtesy review of their 2025 budget. So um, we will be getting a presentation over the next um, four to six weeks from um, Sherburn County watershed, which will present then the the, uh, the Rum River budget. So just be prepared for that. That'll be coming up. Uh, two meetings coming up this week. One, I'm meeting with um, the legislative lead for Congressman Emmer uh, on a number of topics. But if anybody has anything they want me to bring up, um, please let me know. I'm having that meeting on Friday. And then uh, secondarily, I'll be meeting with um, Representative Novotny um, this weekend. And uh, one of the key topics for discussion there will be the, uh, the property tax reform bill that, uh, that he's been working on. And that's all for me. Thank you. Mr. Danlowski? Um. Okay, I had a um, March 19th, I had a joint area chamber meeting, um, which was held over in Monticello with uh, Big Lake Chamber and Becker Chamber joining. It was also open to the public. Um, it was a presentation from MnDOT for the bridge project that's coming up this summer in regards to the um, redecking of the um, Highway 25 bridge that um, gets you from Big Lake to Monticello and um, just their project timeline and different um, things that they were suggesting to help maneuver around um, this project, which will go from July to um, October, I think, is what the timeline is on that. Um, and also had an update. Um, we are working as CMRP, Central Mississippi River Partnership, which has been involved with working towards um, going through the process. We're in a Pell study right now that is helping us um, with the federal and state process in looking towards where another bridge location could be located. So that is in the works. Um, Bridges take a while when you are looking to put another bridge across a river, um, but we just um, are working that process. And like I said, we're in the middle of the Pell study, um, and those can take um, one to two years in their timeline, but you have to do them if you're gonna move forward and work towards any funding for federal and state-wise to get a bridge built, because bridges are not cheap. Um, so anyways, we are working on that, and there was a lot of re really good turnout for this meeting, a lot of good questions. Um, so yes, it's not going to be easy to get around our area for a while this summer. 
Um, March 20th, I attended the SUP Coalition meeting, which is substance use prevention in our county, um, and did a lot of good conversation there. We're getting ready to go into a sticker shop ca shock campaign, which they hold mid-April to mid-May, usually over um, the timeline of where we have um, proms and different things of that nature, trying to make sure that, um, that adults are aware, please do not furnish um, alcohol to youth. Um, and so that's a great campaign. Um, I don't know if anybody's been in a um, liquor store lately, but it's amazing how a lot of what is being sold there, you have no doubt it's being marketed to our youth um, just by what it is and looks like pop and different things like that. So um, also looked at the website update, um, discussed a billboard message in regards to how we reach out, being as our state has chose to um, legalize cannabis and making sure that we try to prevent any of this from getting into our youth's um, hands and making them aware that cannabis legalization does not equal safe. Um, also, um, discuss the um, next meeting in person is April 17th. Um, also had the um, canvassing of the election results for the special election for 27B. And as our administrator um, informed us, Brian Lawrence um, was, um, came out with 1,752 votes in that election. So he is now our representative for 27B. Congratulations, Brian. Um, March 21st, had a county EDA um, meeting, and also later that day had a solid waste um, um, lean event. March 22nd, attended the Centric Care Greater St. Cloud Development Housing Summit. Um, that was really had a great turnout. Centric Care is bringing together a lot of um, um, people in regards to um, trying to find a way to provide um, affordable housing. Um, housing of all kinds um, in our area. And March 25th, I had my options board meeting. I always want to let everybody know that options is having a fundraiser for their um, get out outdoor space. And it had to be canceled um, for the one they had scheduled when we had the snowstorm. And so that one is going to be coming up now. It's rescheduled for April 14th. It's going to be at the Friendly Buffalo um, from the hours of, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 to 2, please come out and enjoy pancakes and support a really great cause for our options um, organization that serves our um, um, special needs community and workforce um, opportunities. And let me see, what else did I have? I also had March 26th, I had our local Big Lake Chamber meeting where we did a presentation for community resource centers um, and what um, what they are in the need that um, we found to work towards creating something where there's a central area for people to go to get um, anything that they might need, questions answered, any resources connected um, to help them um, deal with anything that they're dealing with in their lives. And also, um, March 27th through the 29th, um, I attended a conference up in Nisswa. And it was a very, very interesting conference, very good leadership opportunity. Um, and I found it very, very um, useful and a lot that I can take away from it to be a better um, commissioner. So that's what I bring up to. Thank you. Standing. Thank you. Next. Me? Yeah. You're all looking well, at well, me. Go? Um, OK, the last couple of weeks. Um, Where's my list here? Great River Regional Library Board met. We uh, are working on our budget for next year. Some of the funding that goes into libraries, our six county library system, is levy tax dollars. So we're very, take that very seriously. So working on the budget, that's the big thing on the agenda right now. Um, was able to get up to, with the Mille Lacs Band to celebrate their 25th anniversary of treaty rights. It was a, a great day to be up there to support them. There were three counties, I believe, up there, Pine County, ourselves, and Aiken County um, were there for the celebration. The State Community Health Services Advisory Committee, it's SHAC, is its acronym that I serve on. 
Um, we are we have a planning or a retreat each year, and the SHAC group is our public health system for the state, and each county provides representation on that board. Gary and I are on that board, so we're working on the retreat to, to help um, determine what that retreat needs to be about for our commissioners and our staff. TRICAP, we had a special meeting. I'm very, very thrilled to announce that we have named an, an executive director for TRICAP. So CAP agencies are called Community Action Programs, and every county is connected to a CAP agency, and CAP agencies provide lots of different services for people that, um, some, some people that are struggling in our communities. They do work on everything from weatherization to housing. Tri you must see our TRICAP buses driving around, transportation, different things like that. I serve on the TRICAP board, I chair that board, and we have been searching for a new executive director. So I am excited to name Colleen Orn is going to be our new executive director. Her most recent uh, position is with Milestones Minnesota, which is based out of central Minnesota. It's, it's focused on child care, but she brings a long history of supporting different marginalized populations and lots of nonprofit work. So really excited to have Colleen. She'll join us in about a month. Um, she's just given her notice at her job. Um, met with Region 3 Workforce Council, which is a combination of uh, Career Force, which is Stearns and Benton County, and then an 11 county uh, Joint Powers Board, Central Minnesota Jobs and Training. So the 13 counties meet quarterly to talk about workforce issues, both from the business side and also the individual side. So helping people match, uh, find jobs, things like that, and also supporting businesses in retaining workforce. I also attended the AMC Leadership Conference that Rayanne um, talked about. It was a presenter um, who's, who's studied Brene Brown. So Dare to Lead was the title of it. It was a great conference, many principles and ideas that we could bring back to our work, and it was really fun to have two of our staff members there from Corrections, Bobby and Mia, with us um, for themselves. Let me see what else here. Um, I think that is it. I just also want to congratulate Representative Brian Lawrence and his family. He was sworn in today at noon uh, to represent us in this area, and I'm really happy for him and look forward to working with him. I'm up. Uh, I did two inlets, uh, Amaskusa, Zaga Aganza Regional Park, and on, on our consent agenda, we, we had enlisted for approve the decommissioning of the, for the second phase of that park. Um, on the 21st, we did the Commissioner Felber and Bruce Mesler, we had an XL Energy meeting with Ryan Long, the new president of XL. We talked everything from coal to nuclear. Um, Mark Ossendorf, who our rep was been for years, has retired. His replacement has been finally been found, and Michelle Schmidt, she starts the 22nd of April. Um, the housing summit Rayanne talked about, I think the big thing from that is the workforce housing that we need to work on and the easier for, to construct for, from a zoning standpoint, how counties can help in that. I was a Zoom meeting, I attended the NACO Agricultural Rural Affairs one, which was, uh, we talked about the farm bill and we talked about biomass, and we talked about uh, how the EPA is going to have a new office in the Agriculture and Rural Affairs Devec. Um, it, it, to me, it's going to be a, it will be good because it'll inter intertwine the EPA and the agricultural world a little bit, so they can work together better on things. The AMC leadership was already talked about. The state of the state of the city, St. Cloud. I spoke today was uh, Mayor Dave Kleiss of St. Cloud gave his basically the State of the Union of St. Cloud. Um, which was very good, was an hour-long conversation. Um, he talked, he introduced quite a few people, he introduced a, a lot of the state winners of some of the high schools that were there. And then today, I, earlier before this meeting, I was on a Zoom call for them with MICA, Minnesota Intercounty Association, for the groundwater nitrates and a lot of legislature legislation that's coming through the pipeline in regards to groundwater and nitrates and everything that goes with that. So that was me. Good. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so for myself, um, I also went to the Monticello Chamber event, which uh, Commissioner Dan Lowski already covered. Um, I listened into the recap of the NACO Central Region. They mostly talked about federal funding. 
Um, I also attended the Two Inlets Park meeting along with Commissioner Gray. Uh, one additional thing I will mention from that is that the Farm Friends is going to be taking the small granary out there, which is so, sort of a neat way to see another little bit of that history be preserved from that uh, thing, as, as well as benefiting another, another uh, organization here in the county. Um, and also we have a couple of bonding bills in from our legislative partners. Um, I, already, I, I also worked on canvassing the special election, which has been covered. Um, I went to the Excel meeting, and one other th thing I will mention from that is that they did emphasize that they are going to be working on ensuring that they have adequate base load and that they're going to be less reliant on the overall MISO um, network, and they're going to be looking at more at keeping their reliability based on XL Energy owned components. So that's a good thing, in my opinion. Um, and obviously, we talked about that already. We're going to be going on a, a tour of the Sherco plant to get a better idea of how that works. Um, a thing that the Sherco generators will still be doing is you're going to be synchronous condensers, which is basically like it helps to stabilize the power on a on, on the system. And those generators, the generators themselves, are in separate business buildings from the boilers, and that's how they're going to be able to continue to use those, even though they're not actually using the coal plants in the future. Um, let's see. Then there was uh, the Rural Action Committee, which talked a lot about, NACO Rural Action Committee, which talked a lot about um, broadband issues across the country, and there's some interesting things will be happening there and we'll be watching to see how they affect Sherburne County. Um, I then went to a solid waste meeting where we talked about solid waste issues here in uh, Sherburne County, which I'm not going to cover a lot of it because we're about to talk about solid waste again in our workshop if you want to stay on that. Um, it's just important. It's, it's a very big issue for Sherburne County and we're going to be working very, very hard on, on the solid waste issue in the, in the immediate future. Um, I also did go to the uh, uh, Mill Act Anishinaabe Treaty Day celebration, which Lisa covered. It was a great deal. Um, I went to Congressman Emmer's Veterans Resource Fair, even though my personal um, uh, service was limited to the Cold War National Guard fighting communism on the weekend. I still like to keep track of what um, is going on in, for vets' issues. Um, it was really, there was some really good information there. The VA committee has got a, uh, there's a set of bills coming through that are, could definitely help our veterans in the Housing Act, um, a CVSO Act to expend county uh, veteran service officers in more rural areas. We're fortunate in this state to have them in all of our counties. Um, they're working on a fix for their electronic records, which I'll believe that when I see that. Um, <coughs> the... Uh, there's a post 9-11 service bonus. So those of you, I would encourage everybody out there who served since 9-11, uh, um, there is a $600 bonus for service and there's a $1,200 bonus if you actually deployed overseas during that. Um, there is a Minnesota GI Bill, which I had never heard of myself, despite the fact that I did work for recruiting for a little while, um, which also is additional funding for veterans education. So if you have a veteran in your life, make sure that they're making that uh, available to them. And I would like to say all the time, I would encourage all veterans to check in with our county veteran service office. There's a lot of these things have changed over the years. So even if you were denied something 10 years ago, five years ago, you might be eligible for a benefit now. And the thing that I want to emphasize is these are earned benefits. They're not entitlements or handouts. So if you're a veteran in Sherburne County, please get down and see the crew down at our County Veterans Service Office. Um, had a meeting on the agenda. I went to the DEIB committee meeting. Um, there's a lot of things we talked about there. Probably the most important part is that there is now a employee research group for parents of neurodivergent children, which is a good idea because, you know, it's people in that situation need a lot of support. Um, you can write me later if you want to know what neurodivergent is or look it up. If you don't know what it is, I had to. Um, <laughs> and then we did more work on our lunch and learn program. And then there, one thing I found out is we are investigating getting closed caption on our board meeting broadcast, which I can't emphasize how much that makes me happy because it's just the more that we can communicate and the more, excuse me, the easier it is for people to see what we're doing as your government, the better off we are. So that's something I'm really looking forward to. Um, 
I think that is as quick as I can make my synopsis, and we are done with that. So, um, unless anybody else has any additional comments? No. We will be adjourning our regular meeting, and we will be moving to the workshop. And I'm going to, are we going to stay in here for the workshop this time? Um, if that's okay with you, uh, we probably won't have time to set up tables, but uh, yeah, that'd be Dave fun. can go from the podium. So. All right. Thank you. That'll work.